Chris Greer is not a bad general manager but he is an easy target. Mike McDaniel is an unknown in terms of a head coach but together they should work well. The Miami Dolphins made Mike McDaniel their head coach and he comes with a raw enthusiasm and solid football mind. He doesn't come across demanding. He doesn't appear, on the surface, to believe that he is the smartest guy in the room. He comes from a solid coaching lineage. Greer is now on his second NFL head coach although he was a big part of the Adam Gase hire. He is viewed by many fans to be a problem but he tends to do what the coaches want as best he can. He isn't a domineering general manager and that should bode well for McDaniel who will want to change the Dolphins' offense. Miami, under McDaniel should see a lot of offensive changes this offseason alone. A new running game will be a focus and that should bring changes to the unit's personnel. Tight end is also a feature in McDaniel offense and that could bring some changes to how the tight end are used in the Dolphins offense but the biggest changes should come along the offensive line. Greer is going to be tasked with finding better linemen and he and McDaniel will need to work together to make that happen. Greer knows the guys on the team right now. He knows their strengths and their weaknesses but he isn't a coach. McDaniel needs to find a quality offensive line coach. If he can do that, the problems may get fixed or at the very least identified. Greer career is going to be tied to the success and failures of McDaniel. If the Dolphins can't get better, make the playoffs in the next couple of years, Greer will be out of a job. Many think that he should be out now but with another rookie head coach, it is probably better to keep the general manager that is fully aware of the roster. It cuts down on the research a new general manager would have to do. How well the two work together could help facilitate success. Many in the media have reported that Greer is easy to get along with which makes the entire Brian Flores situation more confounding. He shouldn't have that same problem with McDaniel unless there is a different side of him we haven't seen. Time of course, will tell. The Miami Dolphins should part ways with Eric Rowe. The Miami Dolphins will be undergoing some changes under a new head coach, and Eric Rowe is likely to be one of the players cut. The offseason is just getting underway for the Miami Dolphins, and there have already been some drastic changes to the immediate future for the football team in South Florida. The surprising firing of head coach Brian Flores kicked off the festivities less than 24 hours after the conclusion of the final game. The coaching search had the team tied to names like Jim Harbaugh, Brian Dabble, and Kellen Moore. The aforementioned Flores and his lawsuit against the NFL and the Dolphins have put question marks around the owner and the franchise alike, a situation that will likely drag on for weeks and months. But news of the hiring of a new head coach has the fanbase buzzing. Mike McDaniel, a protege of Kyle Shanahan, will be the new man in charge in Miami. One of his first orders of business after getting settled into his new office will be evaluating the roster, and there should be some names that stick out as dead weight that the rookie coach will look to shed the team of. One of them is Eric Rowe. Rowe has been one of the most consistent and productive players on the Dolphins' defense for the better part of the last three seasons. After a quiet start to his career in New England, Rowe made a name for himself in Miami under Brian Flores, whom he was very familiar with from the time they shared together with the Patriots. There were always more prominent and more premier players in Miami defensive backfield, but Rowe provided above-average secondary play for someone who was attacked while quarterbacks avoided Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. Rowe has fallen out of favor in Miami, however. It is unlikely that you will see him on the opening day roster for the 2022 Miami Dolphins, and here are three reasons why. Reason 1. Emergence of Javon Holland and Brandon Jones. The thing that makes Eric Rowe the most expendable is the emergence of the young safeties on the Dolphins' defense. Rookie Javon Holland and second-year man Brandon Jones all but solidified themselves as the safety tandem of the future with their breakout seasons in 2021, so much so that Rowe's snap count diminished as the year wore on. During his first two seasons in Miami, Rowe played 93% of all defensive snaps, and was one of the most consistent performers in the secondary. He fell out of favor as the Dolphins shifted defensive schemes, and failed to eclipse a 50% snap count in any of the final three games of the season. Rowe was in on just 16 snaps in the team's season-changing loss against the Tennessee Titans. In the final game against the Patriots, just 14. If he fell out of favor in a Flores run defense, then he likely won't fit in the plans of the new head coach. Holland and Jones still have plenty to prove and shoes to fill when it comes to matching Rowe's skill set. The latter was brought in in 2019 to be able to match up with tight ends and bigger wide receivers, and the young duo will have to show that they are able to do the same. Reason 2, he is a Flores guy. While Rowe's departure from the Dolphins may have been imminent either way, the firing of head coach Brian Flores should all but solidify it. 
Rowe was one of the handful of defensive players that made the inter-division switch from the Patriots to the Dolphins over Flores' tenure, and he was brought in ahead of the coach's rookie season. During that tumultuous first year, the defense, and the entire roster for that matter, went through drastic week-to-week -week changes, but Rowe was one of the few steady constants throughout the campaign. He was a familiar face to Flores and became one of the defensive veterans that the coach would lean on. But Flores is gone now, as is the direct pipeline that has been running from New England to Miami, and vice versa, over the last three years. Mike McDaniel and the new coaching staff could have some kind of plan for Rowe that we don't know about, but it would likely be a mutual parting of ways if team and player were to head in opposite directions. It is unknown whether or not Flores will get another NFL coaching job anytime soon, but don't be surprised to see Eric Rowe on a Flores-led defense again at some point in the future. If both are able to keep their careers alive, of course. Reason 3, Declining Dead Cap Hit The cherry on top of the Cut Eric Rowe ice cream sundae is his contract situation for 2022. Rowe will be entering the final season of a four-year deal that he signed in 2019, one that has seen his cap hit fluctuate between $4 million and $6 million owed per season. His cap hit for 2022 is a respectable $5 million, but likely won't be a price the Dolphins are willing to pay for aging, possibly declining secondary play. But the golden ticket is the dead cap number. The dead cap is the price that a team has to fork out for a player even though they are no longer on that team's roster, and Rose is looking enticing for next season. Over the last two years, his dead cap hits were $4.9 million and $4.5 million, meaning that cutting, waving, or trading him would cost Miami nearly as much as keeping him on the roster would. But that magic number goes down to an extremely affordable $525,000 for 2022, meaning that the Dolphins can think about moving on without experiencing any major salary cap ramifications. With Rose still on the roster, Miami still has one of the top five most expensive secondary units in the league. They already have plenty of cap space to work with, but don't be surprised to see the veteran on the chopping block this spring.